Welcome to Bristol, the home of boats, bridges and Brunel. We only have 24 hours, so let's get going. Well, we're going to start our journey where we arrived just a short time ago at Bristol Temple Mead Station. The original station was built by Brunel, but it's changed considerably over the years. Um, we just dropped our luggage off at our hotel and now we're going to head into the station because we're going to take a trip out to Clifton. It's our first destination. The roof seems to be kept under wraps at the minute, so um, some more renovations appear to be going on at Temple Mead Station. May I have your attention please? Over here? Yeah. This is White Ladies Road in Clifton and there's lots of lovely little restaurants which is just as well because Paul is very hungry and I think he has just spotted a Latin restaurant and cocktail bar called Batida. Looks like we're going to go in there. I'm hungry. We are at Batida and it's a Mexican restaurant and we're going to have some nice uh, burger. They do this spicy Valentina salsa picante. I haven't had Mexican food for a while so I think that will be quite good, don't you think? What do you think Marcus? Absolutely. So yeah, I'm, I'm just really hungry right now and I can't wait to get some food into my belly. Come on, where's my food? Okay, looks like this is time to tuck in. This is the Matilda burger, right? Well, unfortunately the weather isn't playing ball, uh, but we've had an absolutely lovely lunch and we've walked further down White Ladies Road. And I remember that this road name has stuck in my head for some reason and I uh, just realised why. Because it is the home of BBC Bristol. And here we are, we're standing outside Broadcasting House. I can remember, I think it was way back in the days of, do you remember Why Don't You? And it used to come from different um, BBC studios all around the country. And one of them was Bristol. And I'm sure that's why the name White Ladies Road is sort of, uh, it's, it rang a bell with me. So here we are, hello BBC. I see that they've even got their own little wildlife garden at the BBC. <laughs> it's very wild. Well, we stumbled across this magnificent building. It's Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. And next door, I believe this is the Wills Tower. And it's part of the university complex. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Do write in. Did you know, Paul, that I used to come to Bristol quite a lot many years ago? When was that? Oh, way back in the sort of the late 90s and early 2000s. And one thing I remember was this big street up a hill. There was a, hill, a, a hilly street with lots of little shops. And for some reason, I thought it was Clifton. Now, I don't see any. We haven't seen anything quite like that. But there are quite a few hills. We've just been walking up and down and um and around here and it is becoming a bit hilly so i'm just wondering if this is actually near the area that i used to visit well we're going to head into clifton village next if i don't get run over by a bus and we'll see what's there i love this street art it's a shame that there's lots of bins in the way but look at the train it's very american Been there, done that. <laughs> oh, look at this, this building's magnificent. 
It says it's um, Queen Elizabeth Hospital. It's actually a school. Oh, I found a hill, Constitution Hill. I think we took a wrong turn somewhere. Oh my God, this is really tough going. But I can see, I think, where we need to be. Mm -hmm. That was one of the toughest hills I've ever walked up. What about you? I'm sweaty, I'm not happy. Well, I can see civilization ahead. We've reached Clifton Hill. I am sure this is the hill that I remember from all those years ago. Oh look, they've even got a Henman Hill. Oh no, it's Hansman's Hill. Oh, well, come on Tim. Well, this is heading towards Clifton Village. This is Clifton Hill. This is it. This is what I remember. You should have warned me. Well, you know, I couldn't remember that far back. I just knew there was a hill with shops. I don't think we'd find it, but we have. We've just stepped off Clifton Hill because this is one of the poshest areas of Bristol. Look, this is Royal York Crescent. Look at the houses. We are not amused. Wow, this is absolutely fabulous. Princess Victoria Street, I think it said. And if we keep walking down here, it takes us down to the River Avon, and hopefully we will get our first glimpse of the famous Clifton Suspension Bridge. We did say that Bristol was all boats, bridges and Brunel, and uh, Isambard Kingdom Brunel was the engineer behind the Clifton Suspension Bridge. Marcus, I think we see it now. Yeah. Don't we? We certainly do. This is Clifton Rocks Railway. What is that? Oh, yes. This is the funicular. What? Yeah. Remember we saw this? The Clifton funicular. It's no longer in operation, but um, yeah, you'd need it in a hilly place like this. Wow, it really is a magnificent structure. You can walk across it. Um, I do not have a head for height, so I'm not going to be doing that. This world-famous bridge was designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, the chief engineer of the Great Western Railway and the designer of the SS Great Britain, now preserved in the former Bristol City docks. Here's Paul with a few more facts about the Clifton Suspension Bridge. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, which spans the Avon Gorge and River Avon, linking Clifton and Bristol, to Lee Woods in North Somerset, weighs 1,500 tons, spans 702 feet, and sits 245 feet above the water below at high tide. Described by Brunel as, my first love, my darling, the bridge took 33 years to complete. The bridge is a grade one listed building originally designed to cater for horse-drawn traffic Clifton suspension bridge today serves as a crossing for more than 4 million vehicles every year we're back in Bristol now we're taking the train from Clifton back into Temple Meads we're going to head to the city centre but Paul has had a little bit of a mishap. What happened? I was stung by a bee. On the train? You were stung on the train, were you? Yeah. Unbelievable. How are you? You've taken um, two painkillers. 
Could be worse. We see the entry point on your finger. Yeah. It it's was quite it's quite nasty. It was it lying in wait for you, wasn't it? It was on the seat, you said. It just came out, stung me, and it's like, alright, bye! I've done my business. Paul, you're wanting to check out the shops, right? Yeah, why not? And where are we now? Cabin surface. Yeah, so we made it over the bridge uh, from Temple Meads and this is the shopping area. They're open until 8 o'clock today. That's lucky, isn't it? So we have T minus one hour. Well, that's long enough for you to do your, your browsing. My perusing. Look at this. There's so much to possibly go into, but let's see what's open. Look, Marcus, it's your favorite pulling bag. Did you get everything you need? Yeah, I think so. Enjoying shopping again then? Well, it is the little things, right? And you recommend the shops in Bristol? Yeah, I think they're quite good. And they're open late as well. Up until 8. Well, Do we wanna... it is a Thursday, so maybe it's not every night, but... Do we want to go to Urban Outfitters for old time's sake? Sure. Since we're here. Okay, off you go then. We're having Moet, Chandon, and orange juice and sparkles. Why not? I think it's good not to just go for beer or wine every so often. It's good to mix it up. Don't you think, Marcus? Yes. So, I can't wait to tuck into this, but in moderation, obviously. So, yeah, it's time for... A wee drink, I suppose. How is the food? Mmm! Lovely! Yeah, my, mine's pretty delicious too. Okay. Time to tuck in some more. Well, that's it for day one. We have retreated to the hotel because Paul has managed to get us two free drinks with his membership of... What is it? Acorn. So, well done for that, and we'll see you in the morning. Cheers. Thank you for watching the show. If you like what you see, then please subscribe. I mean, seriously, please subscribe. Day two, and look, the sun is shining. Let's hope it stays this way. Well, we did promise you bridges, boats, and Brunel, and today we hope to deliver all three of those. Look, I spotted some swans. <gasps> Bristol Bridge. I did promise you a bridge, and that's Bristol Castles, the Castle Gardens. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even know Bristol had a castle, did you? No. <laughs> well, let's maybe take a little walk up and see what's going on. There's scaffolding up the side of it. Wow, nice and sunny. Time to explore some more. reliably informed by this sign that this is actually the River Avon. It seems to branch around Bristol. 
Look at that fabulous wavy bridge over there. Another B of Bristol is bikes. There's one just now. There is a cycle route along by the castle here. Here comes another cyclist. Look. This is interesting. This plaque, it says, um, was erected by Bristol City Council to commemorate those British volunteers who fought with the Republican Army in the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 39. And it's here on the side of Bristol Castle. It feels quite atmospheric here in the, the castle grounds. Um, the sun coming in and out really adds to the, uh, the overall feel of the place. What is the left-handed giant? I'm not sure if Finn McCall was left-handed or right-handed. He certainly was a giant though. Should we go straight ahead? Bristol has a lot of these little nooks and crannies. Mm. Some vacant stuff, I guess. I don't know. That all seems quite new though. Like in a... Uh, Rustic and um, worn out feel to it, maybe. Oh, I didn't know Channel 4 were here. I'm gonna have to look that up later. I know that they are spreading across the UK uh, at the end of all their shows at um, that says where the program was made. So I guess Bristol must be one of their hubs. Very interesting, though. Roll out the barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. No? I'm singing in the rain. Look, this is Queen Square. One of the lovely leafy open spaces around Bristol. And it's certainly getting a bit of a lashing, just like we are today. We're on our way to a very special place. So let's keep going. Umbrellas up. This is how Queen Square should look in the sunshine. It isn't always raining. I think we are just plagued by the wet, dreary weather. But right now we are in luck. So enjoy the view. Shall we cross over? We're on our way to the SS Great Britain, Brunel's ocean sailing ship. But first, we've discovered this lovely little bridge. Remind you of Dublin? No, it reminds me of the bridge in Florence. Rome. No, it reminds me of the bridge Venice? in Venice? Prague. <laughs> I think this is quite a common thing. People like attaching locks to bridges. Shouldn't they do something more unique or whatever? <laughs> well, yes, attach masks perhaps would be the whole new thing. So which thing is that? Is that the castle that we were at just now? No. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> is that like an art exhibition? Take a look at it. Isn't that an orchid? Oh my goodness. Look at the size of that ball. Marcus, we stayed there. Just over there? Yeah. We were right here. Oh wow. Wow. I don't remember any of this. No, I don't remember any of this at all. Look at these fabulous fountain features.
What is this? A spaceship? Look, the aliens have arrived. This is where they would come down these steps, I suppose, to welcome the great and the good. So you could probably imagine Boris Johnson just standing at the bottom of these steps as the intelligent life forms depart at the ship. Look, who's that up there? I see, I see aliens. Look, the aliens have landed. Look, 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 we're down here. You're up there. <laughs> oh, wait, who's that? There's someone else behind us. Isn't this Cary Grant? Oh, wow. Well, he is from Bristol. Or he was. Look, he's even got a plaque. Cary Grant, 1904-1986 movie star, unveiled by his widow on the 7th of December 2001. So we're heading down to the SS Great Britain, there's only one problem. We're on the wrong side of the no. river. No! <laughs> we knew we were. Um, it's quite easy to get to by walking the whole way around again, but there is a ferry, apparently. We're gonna see if it's operating today, and if, it's, uh, if it only costs a quid to go over, then we might take it. Otherwise, we'll be walking. Oh, no. I think the rain's coming again. And there she is. Oh, look. There's the ferry. And look, there's a swan. Hello, baby. This just coming right over. Hello. You coming to say hello? Very friendly. Look, there's your friend over there, your duck. And now here's Paul with the weather. There are lots of showers near the Bristol area It looks as though there was a railway down here at one point as well. Down by the, the dockyards. And then you've got these cranes up here, you see. Oh look, it's Stephen the Seagull. Brunel Square. Brunel's actually there. He's um, he's collecting tickets at the museum. I'm very, very happy to say that we're actually joined by Isambard Kingdom Brunel himself. Absolutely, the very but same. Now, of course, I am a pretty sturdy presence around these parts. And this here is the SS Great Britain. Once was wow. the largest ship on planet Earth when she was launched in 1843. This is the very dock that she was built in, where she resides now, the Great Western Dockyard, custom built to accommodate her enormous size, 322 feet long, 98 meters, that means Mr. Usain Bolt could get from bow to stern in just under 10 <laughs> seconds, you see. Now, if we follow down this way, you will notice several things about the wonderful ship you see before you. Not only the glorious flags flying up and down the rat lines, and atop the mast there. The flags atop the mast are nation flags. This is exactly how she would have looked on launch day, the 19th of July, 1843. From bow to stern, those six masts were nicknamed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because sailors are a slightly peculiar bunch of people. Very sturdy, very foolhardy gentlemen. They would be out along the yard arms with just a thin bit of rope to keep them from the mercy of Mother Nature and the open oceans. The flags that you see going up along the rat lines, they are the letter flags. This was how they communicated in those days. No texting, no internet, no Zoom, of course. This is the modern advent. I might be 215 years old. I know all about the latest technologies, you see. 
Now the Great Britain sailed out of here. Her maiden voyage was two years later, going to New York, carrying passengers in the utmost of Victorian luxury. A year later, she was ran aground at Dundrum Bay when Captain Hoskin missed the lighthouse on the Isle of Man, and she was beached on the coast of Northern Ireland. Eventually bought by the Gibbs Bright Company, repurposed as an emigrant steam clipper going all the way to and from Australia. Most people going over there to capitalise on the gold rush that was occurring at the time. And after 30 years of passenger service, she was eventually repurposed once more as a cargo ship going all the way to San Francisco, taking Panath coal across the oceans. Eventually was badly damaged in a storm in 1886, badly blown off course and ended up in the Falkland Islands at Port Stanley where she remained there until 1970 when she was towed 8,000 miles across the open oceans and on the 19th of July, this important date in the calendar of the Great Britain, she was back in the dock where she was launched from 127 years to the day and now she has been here for 51 years, over half a century, her gradual glorification taking its time. That is real gold on the stern of the ship, no expense spared in her restoration. And I think you'll agree she looks rather wonderful. That is a brief history of the SS Great Britain. I have been Isambar Kingdom Brunel, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you very much, sir. Not a problem. Thank you. Well, we are leaving the SS Brunel Great Britain. We've just said goodbye to Isambard for himself. We are on first name terms now. Wow. And uh, yes, he's, he's going to watch the show. <gasps> so, uh, yeah. Do you think he could work with the technology, though? Well, I think he needs to put some coal in the YouTube <laughs> furnace. But once he does that, I think it should be OK. Yeah. And look, the sun's come out at long last. Just as almost time for us to go. Oh, no. So did you enjoy your 24 hours in Bristol, Paul? It was way too short, way too short. I yeah. think that whenever we come to the Southwest, it's always rainy, always. <laughs> mm. it, all, it always seems to be, and the sun always seems to start shining as soon as we are about to leave. So we hope that you've enjoyed it. We'll probably come back to Bristol another time. I think so, because I need to go to all those bars that I wrote down, but then I didn't get a chance to go. Yeah, you need more than 24 hours here. Uh, but of course, you can never predict the weather. Not here anyway. We'll see you next time. All right, take care. Bye-bye.